And let me push play so it's full screen. My name is Michelle Umloff, and I will be your host tonight. Just a little bit about me. I am Salky's newest national educator. I've been with Salky now as an educator for about a year and a half. And late last year, I made a proposal, hey, let's do online webinars. And the boss said yes, and we finally are bringing it to you. And this is a really exciting time for Salky because we've done a lot recently to make a greater online presence. Just last month, we updated our website, and you really have to go check that out because it has a lot of great features. It has a fresh new look and feel, and it's a great resource for you if you ever have any questions or need more information about how to use your Salky project products. This evening, uh, I am recording this webinar. In about two days, you're going to receive an, an email from us and you will be able to click on a link and watch the webinar right away. Um, the webinar will also be uploaded to the Salky website, but that'll be done sometime next week. And also, in your email that you'll receive in a couple days, you will get a link to a downloadable PDF of this presentation. So that is fantastic. So tonight you can kind of relax, maybe take a few notes, but not too many. You can pay attention to the webinar and know that you can watch the recording later and have this presentation available for you. I need to thank a few special people that are helping me out this evening. Uh, Patty Lee is our Vice President of Con Consumer Relations, and she's going to be moderating your questions and answering for you. As the questions come in, uh, we also have Ellen Austin here. She's our Director of Education, and she's going to help Patty, as well as Kelly Nagel, who is our Social Media Manager, and you've all seen Kelly's wonderful newsletters. You've seen her post on our blog as well as our Facebook account. So thank you all ladies for your assistance tonight. We do have a little bit of uh, room to learn as we do our first webinar, but one thing I want to let you know is um, hopefully the technology guide gods will be on our side tonight and that um, if you have any sort of technical difficulties, we encourage you to reach out to GoToWebinar, and I'm going to jot down their phone number for you in our chat screen, so you should be able to see it. It is 855-352-9002. So if you have any technical issues, please reach out for them to help you resolve resolve them because all of our computers are quite different and we just don't know that much about technology to help you. We like to sew. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right into our presentation this evening on the crazy wavy patchwork using Salky threads and stabilizers. Whoops, let me catch up to myself. All right, uh, we're going to cover a couple different topics tonight. We told you how we're going to make those tricky looking looking curves, uh, how you can sew them together easily. And the key is using our Salky Polylite thread and a couple other tips along with that. Salky has 11 types of thread, and we're going to work on demystifying the thread weight for you. In our future webinars, we'll be covering additional threads and stabilizers, and I couldn't possibly talk about all of them in one hour, and you all still be asleep after that time. We'll also start talking about stabilizers and how you can use them to sew successfully and have really good results with your sewing projects. And finally, we'll cover beautiful hand embroidery with our cotton petite threads. The picture that you see on the left hand side is what the block that we're, I'm going to show you how to make. And in order to get to that point, you will begin with four different fabrics. And the size of your blocks really doesn't matter uh, to make this. It, what matters is what you're intending to make. If it's a quilt or whatnot, 
you know, we're the, I just gave you eight by eight because I know someone would ask what size fabric does it need to be? And it really doesn't matter. And what you'll do is you'll create two stacks by placing two pieces of fabric on top of one another. And it's important to make sure that the right sides are up. Now, if you like to use batik fabrics, that's perfect because they're quite forgiving in case you forget that important uh, detail with the right sides up. So now I have the fabrics stacked on top of each other in my two separate piles and you freeform cut using a rotary cutter from the lower right hand corner to the upper left hand corner and you want to gently make a soft S shape on one of those stacks and a soft sheet C shape in the other stack. Now the two little pictures on the side just repeat or just show you what I've just explained. Now you're going to match each half with its opposite color. So that means with the cut fabric that you have, you would take the top piece from one section and match it up with the bottom piece. So you have two different color fabrics that form a square, like you see uh, on the block on the right hand side. You, the key to this is to make registration marks along the curve because that's important. You're sewing on the bias and things are going to get a little wonky as you match them up. But as long as your registration marks match up when you pin, as you sew along, it's really going to match up and, and look fantastic. It might feel a little awkward, but it will work. Trust me. You'll want to thread your machine with poly light thread. That is a 60 weight thread and that is really light. We're going to talk about the thread weights in just a little bit and you can use the poly light thread in both the top and bobbin of your machine. With the poly light thread, since it's a lightweight thread, you can use a smaller needle such as a 1070 or 1175. Now the trick to doing this really is using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. In the picture, I have installed my quarter inch foot, but I use that inner toe as my mark for my seam allowance. And then this way, you really don't have to clip the curves once you finish sewing so that the, the, the seam will lay flat. You simply set the seam and if you're not familiar with that term, if you're new to sewing or don't really do a whole lot of quilting, set the seam really means that you're just going to press that seam flat before you start any other type of pressing. And then you will press the seams open. I found it a little easier to use a uh, a press ham, a pressing ham, or a sleeve roll, or something like that, that had a curve to it so that I could press that seam open. Then you'll turn it over to the right side and use steam so that it presses out nice and flat. And it really does. It's that quarter inch seam or one eighth inch seam allowance that helps out a lot, as well as using a lightweight thread. Now, if you noticed, you're going to have some extra fabric left over, and that's really great. If you like to be a perfectionist, then your first block will be your tester, and then you can sew it again and, um, you know, perfect any sewing challenges you thought you may have had. Now, I don't think that there's any type of sewing mistakes. I think they are challenges for decorative opportunities. And later on, we're going to show you how you can cover up some of those challenges you might have made. For all of you out there who are visual people, I've created this little chart for you that will help you understand thread weight a little more clearly. Just an overall view of this thread chart, I have made it color coordinated according to some of the labels on our thread. So I think that's really helpful for one thing. And um, the poly light, you can see that it is 
written in purple or typed out in purple because when you hold one of those smaller spools of thread you'll see that poly light is written in purple and that makes it so much easier um, to know these colors and be able to readily identify what you have in your hand so when it comes to thread weight the larger the number the thinner the thread okay and you can see that 60 weight is on the far left hand side of this along with the bobbin thread. Now poly light thread can be used as bobbin thread too when you need a, a matching or coordinating about bobbin thread that's just as pretty as your top thread wind a spool or a bobbin up with the poly light. Poly light can also be used for decorative stitches especially those delicate decorative stitches Perhaps even your machine has uh, built-in lettering. And if you've ever sewn out those uh, letters, you might notice that they don't really appear to be all that crisp. So for instance, Michelle has two E's in it. If I were to use a heavier weight thread, say a regular 40 weight rayon thread, when I stitch out my name Michelle, the little circle in the E kind of fills up. But if I simply switch to a lighter weight thread, the name stitches out great and I can see the letters much more distinctly. Poly light thread is really good for doing micro stippling or free motion sewing such as thread sketching and, and other types of uh, projects like that. <clears throat> It does have stretch and stretch memory because it is a polyester thread. So you'll want to uh, reduce your top tension. But we know you're always gonna test that out first, right? <laughs> so poly light thread is available in various um, collections. Now the one thing Salky provides prides ourselves in is not only quality but education about our products and that's why I've included a slide here so that you can see what our what our products are available in different collections so for example you might have only seen the poly light threads individually by the spools and you might not have been aware that we have a six pack collection of these basic colors uh, for you if you're a person like me and you would like to have all of the colors, there are 60 colors available in the poly light and we have a collection that's called the Dream Assortment. Now there are 36 solid colors and 24 multi colors, which means they change color every in one inch increments. The starter collection has 17, 24 colors, both in 12 solids and 12 multi colors. Now the boss has let us put the two collections and the six pack on sale tonight, and we will give you some information about that soon. All right, let's go back to our block. So now that we have it, all pressed out and it's nice and flat we have two blocks with two different colors each you're going to place these blocks on top of one another and they're also going to be right sides up it's important to note that the seam should be in the same corner as you can see here in the picture the seams running from the lower right hand corner to the upper left hand corner You're going to use your rotary cutter this time and you're going to cut from the lower left corner up to the upper right corner and you're going to choose whether you want to make that into a S or a C shaped cut. Very easy. Then you're going to align each half with its opposite block just like you did before. You take the top piece and align it up with the bottom half and then you can ha you'll have a, a section that has four different colors that match up and you're just going to do what you did earlier you're, you're going to make the registration marks along the curve you're going to um, align them up and pin them sew them together using a 1 8 seam 
one eighth inch seam allowance. Okay, my head and my tongue have to get coordinated. <laughs> I'm not nervous at all. <laughs> then you'll set the seam and press it open again and flip it over and steam it flat. So that's really, really easy. It turns out to be really great. Uh, and each block that you make is going to be unique because you can really have fun with the different colors, different prints, and because you probably won't be able to cut the same shape twice, no two are going to be alike. So I have a special treat for you tonight. Nancy Sapin is here with us, and she is the designer of the wall hanging Beauty and the Beast that was the inspiration for this project. Um, the small block that I'm showing you is featured in our new book, Embellish Your Life with Saki. So Nancy, I have taken you off mute. Let's see. Okay, can you hear me? I sure can. I can oh, hear great. you loud well, and clear. Good. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Nancy Sappen, and I've been with Sulky now for nine years, and I've been a national educator for eight of those years. Um, I designed this wall hanging. Just it, it just kind of happened. In fact, many times I thought I was, like, making a mistake and found out that it was just a creative opportunity to keep going in a different direction. So I just kept adding and, and changing, and it and it just came about like it's um, like it's like you see it right there. What we're doing tonight is just a version of what this wall hanging is, and it's a technique that you'll find within this book, embellish your life. You can make technique pages and like journal pages throughout the book of all different techniques. And this is just one technique. I've used this in quilts. I've used this pattern in pockets and in jackets, all kinds of different things. So you can just have fun with it. Be creative. Remember, there's no mistakes. It just happens that this, what I thought was a mistake, ended up to being a good creative opportunity to turn into what it was. So just have fun with it. Thanks, Nancy. And I love all the different techniques that you've incorporated in this quilt, which are also featured in our book with the wonderful step-by-step -step instructions. And I will uh, talk about uh, the different techniques that you, you incorporated in this a little later. So okay, thank thanks. you so much. Thanks, Nancy. I'm going to put you on mute now. All right. Well, that was really nice opportunity to hear from Nancy about her beauty and beast wall hanging. Let's see. There we go. All right. So once we have our block that is completed with the four different sections, I know mine was getting quite wonky and I needed to square it because it was just absolutely driving me crazy. You'll want to fuse a piece of soft and sheer extra stabilizer to the wrong side of the block using a warm iron. Now the soft and sheer extra stabilizer to the touch, you can feel that it has a lumpy side or a rough side that is the fusible and that's what that's the side that needs to be applied to the wrong side of your block now if you're like me sometimes I like to surprise myself with magic tricks and I go to press it on raise my iron and then I'm like what happened to the stabilizer only to find it at the bottom of my iron how many people have done something like that before <laughs> I, I like to laugh at myself when that happens. It's just surprising. All right, so now I'm going to unveil some of the secrets to stabilizer success. It's really not that difficult, and I know when you're unfamiliar with stabilizers, how confusing this can be. It can, it can seem like it would take a lifetime to look to learn how to do this, and it's not really that difficult. What you need to know is that stabilizers fall into one of four different categories. First, you have cutaway stabilizers, then there are tearaway stabilizers, as well as wash away and heat away. 
Now, the one thing that really impressed me about Saki is how they have color coded their labels, and that just makes it way too easy. <laughs> so as you can see, the cutaway stabilizers will be packaged in purple. And a way to remember that is cutaway is a permanent stabilizer. So you can associate the word permanent with purple. That one's easy. The tearaway stabilizers are a temporary stabilizer, and the way that I remember that is I think about trees, because in the summer the trees are really beautiful, they're nice and green, but the leaves are only there temporarily until they fall off in the fall. The wash away stabilizers are packaged in blue, and that's pretty self-explanatory and easy to remember because it takes water to wash away the stabilizer. And the heat away stabilizer simply heats away with an iron. Now, if that kind of confuses you or it takes a little while for that to really sink in, we also have these really great icons on the packaging as well. And you'll see a, a closer up picture of them in just a moment. But there, you know, if you pick it up and you just look at the icon, you'll know for sure what you have in your hand. So that is like, if you remember anything tonight, remember about, uh, remember these four different categories. And since you're going to get a, a downloadable version of this presentation, you could print this page out even and use it for reference. A closer look at the cutaway stabilizers, and here you can see that icon up close, and it's it's quite um, indicative of what that icon means. Permanent stabilizers are permanent. They always stay with your fabric. You either have to cut them away, or in cases like the uh, soft and sheer extra, when you fuse it on, it is a permanent stabilizer that is really going to stay uh, with the fabric and the material or the block uh, for a very long time. Um, cutaway stabilizers eliminate pulled or sagging stitches. If you've ever noticed that your decorative stitches aren't standing out on your fabric the way that you would like them to appear, it's because you need a little bit of stabilizer underneath of it. Now, a general rule of thumb, especially for those of you who do machine embroidery, you probably know that a knit fabric requires some type of cutaway stabilizer to go along with it when you do your embroidery. And the reason being is that the cutaway stabilizer is, um, is resistant to stretch, so it kind of controls your knit fabric so that um, there's no distortion when you embroider a design on your fabric. Within our cutaway stabilizer family, we have a couple members, um, five of them to be exact. And as you can see, soft and sheer extra is highlighted, but you might notice that soft and sheer extra has a cousin named soft and sheer. The only difference between these two stabilizers is soft and sheer extra is about one and a half times heavier than the soft and sheer stabilizer and the soft and sheer extra has a fusible side to it as well. Soft and sheer extra, as I've touched on, is a texturized stabilizer. It is a non-woven nylon stabilizer, and with it being nylon, that uh, is a key for you to remember to use a warm iron when uh, fusing the soft and sheer extra to your projects. Now you might ask me, what is considered a warm iron? Well, it really depends on your iron. Our irons are on, they get used quite often, and I don't know about you, but my irons never seem to hold their temperature to the setting I think that they're at. So like I mentioned earlier, we always encourage you to practice first or um, test first because you don't want any surprises on your final projects. Uh, otherwise, you just create more decorative opportunities and you have to work with it, right? So um, the soft and sheer extra is 
considered a mid-weight stabilizer. If your iron is too warm, you'll notice that the soft and sheer extra will um, ripple a little bit and it will become distorted. So please test that out first before you actually uh, try it with your iron. Soft and Shear Extra is available in a variety of put-ups that you can see here. And the boss said it was all right for us to put all of these on sale too. So we have the small 20 inch by one yard package. We have eight and 12 inch rolls as well as the bolt. So um, they come in a lot of useful sizes. You know, a lot of times it might depend on your the size of your embroidery machine hoop. So uh, the bolts are on sale as well if you have those large hoops. So I've pumped you up for our special. This is a limited time offer. It is going to expire next week, next Tuesday, May 19th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. It will expire. And you need to use the code SULWEB1. And that is good for all of the products that you've seen here on this screen. We've just talked about two of them. Well, actually three of them because the Embellish Your Life with Salky book is also included in the sale. Now, if you need to write one thing down this evening, it would be uh, this web link. And I can also provide that in your uh, email that you'll receive in a couple days. And it is www.salky.com forward slash catalog forward slash S U B forward slash and our promotion code S U L W E B and the number one. That will take you directly to a page that has all of the products uh, that we feature tonight where they are all on sale. So you don't have to go hunt and peck for them. And if you noticed what I just said, that you can order these prod products from by visiting our website, Salky.com. That is new. That, has, uh, that took place back on April 23rd. So that is a brand new feature that Salky... Um, has provided for our customers. So woohoo! You can shop for, for, for Salky products through our website in the comfort of your own home. All right, um, at this time, I'm gonna ask Patty Lee, who is our Vice President of Consumer Relations to take herself off mute. And Patty's gonna talk, about, talk to you about this new program that we are offering. Patty, are you there? I am, and I'm ready. All right, it's yours. Take over. I, can... <laughs> I am so excited to be here. There are so many people joining us. I am just blown away by the response. Thank you, everyone. We're going to have a good time tonight and even more fun in the future. We have this new program called Artistry and Applique that's going to be offered online very soon. June 1st it starts, and you can sign up until the middle of June, and there are some fabulous projects in there. You will have so much fun. I realize there's nothing new on earth anymore. It's all been done, but we're doing it new and different and with new products and making it a lot more fun. Alan Osten, our director of education, is one of the educators. Eric Drexler, whom you all know, is the king of free motion work. He's doing the Zen Tangles pillow that you see in the middle of the slide. And uh, Kelly Nagel, who's our social media manager, she is going to be there and she's going to teach you topsy-turvy applique and square dance applique. And Ellen is doing the woven table runner, the marvelous meandering woven table runner. And I think that you are going to find that these classes and these techniques are so applicable to your life and to your sewing style that you're really going to enjoy them. And I hope you join us. They're an amazing price of $199 for all five classes and one of the features that we have that nobody else that I know of offers is you can download our videos and keep them forever so even if the class is over in five weeks and you don't get to it for five more weeks it's going to be there on your computer whenever you want to access it and those of you who have ever taken any of our classes sit and sews 
consumer shows, wherever you've taken our classes, you know that we're always there for you and we'll help you out no matter when the question is, even if the class is over a year later. That's what we do. So I'm so excited that we're going to have this opportunity to show these classes and share these classes and have fun with you and I hope you join us and there's more excitement later on in the show that we're going to tell you about too. So join us, won't you? Thanks, Patty. And it looks like they can go to craftonlineuniversity.com to register for that class, right? That's correct. And, and uh, that class is up there, and you can register now. So we want you to go there. Uh, the, we'll type the website in for you if you don't catch it on this, but it's craftonlineuniversity.com, and we'll re reiterate that a little later in the program. So that information is there. We've got another exciting one that isn't there yet, but maybe will be tomorrow. Ooh, how exciting. Well, they can also oh. use the promotional code SALKYAPP50 and receive a $50 discount on that class, right? Yes, yes, and that's just for early registration, so don't miss out on that opportunity. And again, as I said, we're going to keep <laughs> registrations open to the middle of June because you'll still have plenty of time to get the projects done. So... That isn't a cutoff point on June 1st, but it will be by the middle of June. Well, that's great. Well, thanks, Patty. And don't go away because I think you have to help me with the next slide. Okay. All right. So people have probably had some time to ask some questions, and I really have to take a deep breath here. Okay. I hope somebody doesn't stump me. <laughs> I'll have to call the reserve team if I need to. So do you have any questions for me, Patty? Well, we've been answering as fast and furiously as we can. One of the questions I think that was really kind of a technical question was what are registration marks? Oh, okay. Well, registration marks um, are... Uh, little marks and answer with the same word uh, that you make along the curve so that you know that you can line so you can line them up um, when you're sewing to make sure that the curve is coming together evenly and you can make registration marks with your favorite sewing or fabric uh, marker it could be a heat away marker it could be wash away air soluble chalk whatever uh, you is your preference use that to make the marks great question yes and they were also asking several people were asking about the uh, stabilizers that we would use for freestanding lace, the water solid, uh -huh. which ones would we use? Well, that I always tell people on that one that they should really rely on whoever did the design of the embroidery. They they should know whether they want the fabric type fabric solvy or the film type ultra solvy because it makes a difference in the quality of your embroidery when you use the one that the designer designed for. I really love freestanding lace. That is such a beautiful technique. Do you have any more questions? Oh my gosh, they're coming in fast and furious. <laughs> well, let's take one more because we only have an hour tonight. No question is going to go unanswered. Our team is answering them um, as they come in behind the scenes. And if we don't get to you tonight, I can print out a report and I will see every single question that came in and we can ensure that you will get a response to your question. So let's do one more, Patty, please. One of the questions was whether these particular classes, artistry and applique, can be done by a beginner sewer. And, and I would certainly say yes. There is nothing in there that is complicated. There is nothing in there that is boring. There's a lot of technique and a lot of fun things you can do. And you can take it to any level you want. But you'll be able to do the basic class without a problem. And I think that it will appeal to people who even are expert sewers because there's so many great ideas and we do a big trunk show after every class and, and really inspire you to do more. So don't, don't be intimidated. We'll help you every step of the way. Oh, that's great. You know, that kind of reminds me of a story. <laughs> when I was a new sewer, um, you know, I bought my first sewing machine that... Um, had sewing capabilities as well as the embroidery unit and I took my first class to learn how to make an heirloom blouse 
<laughs> I didn't set the bar too high for that, I don't think. But I had never even cut out a pattern at that point. So I really learned a lot about my machine of taking that class. And it was really a lot of fun. I, I will never forget that. And I still have the blouse that I made today. And I am quite pleased with it. So thank you everybody for those questions. We will have another question breakout session in just a little while. So let's get back to our presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to do a door prize. We're like at halftime right now. So we have this fabulous package that we will mail to you. So if you are here, please type something in your question box to say that you are here, you're so excited, um, you can't wait. So Patty, can you select a name for me? She's going to spin the wheel and uh, choose our door prize winner. You will receive The Secrets to Successful Applique. That is one of Salky's books, and it is chock full of useful information, not only information about applique, but some other sewing techniques as well. As you can see, you'll receive a package of puffy foam and Fabrisolvi Tender Touch and Fuse and Stitch. In future webinars, we will cover these projects products so that you learn more about them. In addition, you'll receive a 30 weight and a 12 weight spool of cotton blendables. So Patty, do you have a lucky winner for us? I do. Me. Oh no. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Mary Ann Wilson. Mary Ann, are you here? Type in the question box if you can and let us know that you are online and that you're happy that you are the lucky winner tonight. Wow, there's a lot of people. <laughs> there sure are. And we'll give her time to respond to her to, to us. But if not, I have your information um, in our report and we can send out an email to you uh, oh, after. She just responded, Michelle. She oh. says, I am here in Pennsylvania and I am so thrilled. Oh, wow. We're almost neighbors. I live in the western part of Maryland. So howdy, neighbor. <laughs> Congratulations. All right, in just a little while, I'm going to tell you how you can do beautiful handwork using our lovely Salky Cotton Petite Threads. Now, I must admit, I am one of those people that hand is a four letter word in my vocabulary. But because of this technique that I'm about to show you, that doesn't exist anymore because I don't just refer to it as hand, I refer to it as hand work. So it makes it an eight letter word. <laughs> I have to entertain myself somehow. So we're back to this chart that you're becoming familiar with. And please feel free to download this and use it in, as a resource in your sewing room. As you can see, we're on the other end of the spectrum with the 12 weight threads. And we're going to focus tonight on cotton petite threads. Now, in this chart, you'll notice that above the cotton petites, we have the solid cottons and the blendables. These are the same threads. However, the difference is in the size. The cotton petite thread has 50 yards of thread on a spool versus the solid cotton and the blendables thread in the 12 weight have 330 yards of thread on the spool. You would have to do a lot of handwork to use up one of those spools of thread uh, when you do your handwork. But I want to reassure you that the cotton petites is not only for uh, handwork. You can also use it in your machine. In fact, when I was at the expo in Cleveland recently, a lady came up to me and she was like, this is the best thing ever because she does art quilts and she likes to use the cotton petites so that she could get the whole collection of colors and um, use them to fill in on her, um, her projects. So you can also use them in your sewing machine. That's a lot of information to go into tonight about sewing with the 12 weight threads, but we will cover that at a later time. 
So as you can see, the smaller the number, the thicker the thread. And the 12 weight is a heavy weight thread. I have a close up picture to show you so that you can kind of get a, a better gauge of how thick this thread is. And the cotton uh, petites are just absolutely beautiful. Now, as I mentioned, the cotton petites were designed for people who do hand work. And it's really convenient to have your thread on a spool because you don't need to separate the threads. You don't get this rat's nest of thread and then have to figure out a way how you can easily store it. Um, our spools have a snap end on, and in fact, this size spool has a snap end on both ends, and that easily um, opens up if you gently lift up on it, and you can uh, store the thread tail there. And you know, I have cats, and I let them into my sewing room, and I have spools of thread laying all over the place, and I don't worry about them getting a hold of that. Um, so I feel really comfortable about doing that. But one of the really neat things about the cotton petite threads is that since it's on a spool and the spools are well marked, you don't lose the color number um, of the, the color that you're using because some of the shades are so close. Uh, related that um, you're not sure if it's color one two three or one two four so um, it's it's really handy well, we have a lot of colors available uh, cotton cotton petite threads is made out of 100 Egyptian cotton and the cotton itself is sourced from Egypt now it is finished and dyed in Italy so that's why you will see Italy uh, written on the, the spool. This is a very high quality thread that has a long staple and they're just absolutely beautiful to look at. They have this soft warm glow to them and it just really has a natural look and feel. I just drool over that display when we're at the, the, the uh, booths at the expo. Here's the close-up picture and you can see how the spool cap pops up just a little bit. It opens all the way around so you don't have to force it in there and you don't have to yank it out. And Salky Threads were one of the th first manufacturers to develop the snap end spool. So we deserve a big pat on the back for that. Uh, just to reiterate what I've already said, that this is a 12-weight cotton thread, so it's a little heavier. One strand is equal to two strands of embroidery floss. So this is just the perfect kind of packaging uh, to have for when you're on the go and things don't get all tangled up. And there's 50 yards of thread on one spool. I've already touched on these, so I really don't have to go over this again. Now, what you see before you is the original collection. We have 131 solid colors now. And um, the way that we package these up, um, we have them available in entire collections. So this is the first collection. It consists of a 100 and, no, 80 colors. And there are 14 uh, cotton blendables in that package as well. So the colors that you see here are also available on the larger spools. We're just gradually pulling the colors from the larger spools and making them available in the cotton petites. By the way, on our website, if you navigate and look, we do have a color conversion chart for your DMC threads and your other brand threads um, that you use for hand work. And this is really exciting because this picture shows all of our brand new colors and oh boy these are just absolutely gorgeous my favorite color oh because of the way my screen is set up uh, oh it's the mimosa yellow I worked with that in Cleveland and oh it was just so brilliant the color was just amazing and there are 16 new blendables uh, available um, in our new uh, collection here. So these are just absolutely incredible. The, indi the uh, cotton petites are available in individual spools and we have the two collections that I just showed you. If you when you go to our website 
you will be able to see all of the colors that are available in any of our thread collections. Um, and that, and are, they're really close up pictures. They're very clear, crisp and shiny. And in the cotton petites, we also have what we refer to as a six pack collection. It's a six pack of thread, nothing else. And we have 13 of them. And they're in different types of categories, such as there's the seasons, there's a collection of reds, greens, Christmas, I think, um, and etc. So there's 13 different colors um, that you can, or 13 six packs that you can choose from if you only need a few uh, colors. So in our sale this evening, um, that's good until next Tuesday, is the Cotton Petites as well. It was the first and second color collections that I showed you. And also, I did not write this down, but there is one collection that is devoted entirely to the cotton blendable threads. So um, that's really nice too for people who like the heavyweight, 12 weight cotton blendables. Uh, we have an, a collection exclusively available for that. And all of the 13 six packs are included in our sale. So I'm getting there. I'm almost through covering all the different products that we have on sale this evening, but there's still one important thing that I need to go over with you. After our break <laughs> with Patty, Patty, it's your turn again. That's one thing, I can't remember the order of my slides. As much as I practice, I just can't put all of them to memory. So, Patty, are you there? I am, and I got all excited answering questions and I wasn't paying attention, I'm so sorry. Okay. I was just in another world. Anyway, what we have to tell you about now is really exciting. Any of you who have ever taken our certified teacher training classes, and now that we're offering them online, a lot of our alumni have asked for us to do some continuing ed classes. So we put this program together for a continuing ed event, but it's open to people who have already been certified as teachers for Selkie, those who want to begin their career as a teacher for Selkie, a certified online teacher, or if you're just doing it for fun, we've had probably half of the people that have attended over the last 10 years at our sit and souls were just there to have fun. And we do have fun, that is for sure. So we want you to join us. Alan Osten, our Director of Education, will be teaching both of these classes. And honestly, these classes are fabulous. The one uh, is the Garden Gate Journey, and that is another incredible landscape that was designed by Carol Ingram. Any of you who have ever taken any of our classes know that Carol designs the most incredible projects for us. She is such a gifted artist, but she manages to make it easy for those of us who can't even color. You know what I mean? And she does it with this project. It looks so incredibly difficult and is so incredibly easy. And we're, that's one of the continuing ed classes. And then the other one was designed by Evelyn Byler, who over the years you've seen her work if you've taken any of our classes. She is the most incredible sample maker we've ever seen and many of the quilts in our booths and when the educators travel all their samples many of them have been made by Evelyn so she designed this seasons of life calendar it's a perpetual calendar holder and it is all four seasons and in order to be certified you only have to complete the summer season but you will get directions for your classes for all four seasons so it's like four classes in one, and both of those continuing ed classes are only $99. I, I just, that is just a fabulous offer. I want to take them, and I'll even pay for them. Oh. so good. Wow, that is super cool. And, you know, Patty knows that I am an alumni of the Certified Teacher Program, and that is wonderful. It's a really great way to uh, start your career if you're interested in teaching people how to sew. And the projects are just phenomenal. The directions are great and uh, it's really a lot of fun and very worthwhile. Now, Patty, I have a screen that's covering up part of this slide, but there is also another early bird registration discount, right? Yes, there is. It is Selkie code CT for Certified Teacher 
25. So if you use that discount code, you can get it for, come on, this is math now, help me, $74. Um, and it's really, it's you will be so happy taking this class. It doesn't matter where you are in your sewing career. You will have so much fun. And guess who's teaching it? Ellen Osten. Yeah. <laughs> Helen is a lot of fun and unfortunately she has laryngitis tonight. But Ellen, oh, you know, yes. I am so thankful that you got the laryngitis and not me. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I think Patty's le stress level would have went through the roof if that something like that backup. happened. It was backup for for Michelle, so I'm so grateful she's here. <laughs> I took my vitamins. Well, thank you, Patty. Thanks. And I think we have a door prize coming up a little bit later. I know I saved the last door prize until the very end, but I want you to hear about this uh, technique that we are going to show you tonight. Okay, it involves another stabilizer, and it is a wash away stabilizer. I wanted to include this, so this uh, slide so that you could see it again because I really believe the more you see this, the more it's going to start sinking in how you can associate the colors with the types of stabilizers and the icons. They're not quite as easily to see, but just know that they are there. The wash away stabilizers are temporary stabilizers and they're just that. They easily wash away by just adding water. You can soak them in water or run them under the sink with, uh, under the faucet with water. Um, I am one of those people that all the time does something interesting and my husband, I try to hide it. <laughs> but if I use a heavyweight stabilizer and there's a lot of it, I generally don't try to put it down the sink, you know, like in the bathroom sink. I'll either do it in the bathtub or in the, um, the laundry tub, but oftentimes I will just put it in a bucket and then um, rinse it off that way. And um, that water can be then put onto your flowers. It's, you know, it's, it's reusable. There's nothing toxic in any of our products, so it's safe. Within the wash away stabilizer family, there are six different stabilizers that I would love to cover in future webinars with you. But tonight, we're going to focus on sticky Fabrisolvi stabilizer. This is a fabric-like stabilizer, and you can tell that by the name, and you can also notice that it's sticky. So it has a release sheet that when you remove it, it exposes the sticky side of the Fabrisolvi, or the sticky Fabrisolvi stabilizer. So you can kind of think of it as like a postage stamp, if you will, and it washes away. <laughs> so it could be great for like a magic trick or something. Um, but anyway, uh, the, I'm going to focus on the printable version of the sticky Fabrisolvi stabilizer, and it's available in 12 eight and a half by 11 sheets in one package. The sticky Fabrisolvi stabilizer is in my opinion, one of the most versatile stabilizers that we have. And we talked about the book, Embellish Your Life with Salky. This stabilizer is used quite frequently throughout the book in a lot of the different projects. So if this is one stabilizer that you don't have in your collection, you might want to consider taking advantage of our sale tonight and getting uh, stocking up on this. The sticky fabric solvi is available in other put-ups rather than the printable sheets. We have the small 20 inch by one yard package all the way up to the 20 inch by 25 yard bolt. And all of them are included in the sale tonight too. Yay. All right, so we're gonna put all of it together. We talked about the cotton petite thread. We talked about the sticky Fabrisolvi. Now I'm gonna show you how you can use these two tools so that you can do beautiful hand embroidery. And uh, I'm just amazed that I could do this. In the book, Embellish Your Life with Salky is a CD and on the back, um, the CD contains a PDF version of the stitches that you see here. It's a template of the stitches, as well as detailed instructions on how to do the handwork for these. And it's simple. 
simple enough for me to do it. And what you're going to do is pull up that document in your on your computer and you're going to print that out on uh, using your home printer. Now you, I have an inkjet printer and that's what I used here. I believe it even says that you can use the um, laser jet, but I think that gets just a little too hot for the sticky fabric solvy. So if you can print uh, anything, your document out on this, that, that would be better using the inkjet printer. Um, and Patty, when she comes back, Oh, and she can correct me if I'm wrong about that. She can trump what I might have to say. So now that you have it printed onto the sticky Fabrisolvi stabilizer, you're going to cut these strips. And then they're kind of like a Band-Aid. You can place them on the seam. You can place them anywhere that you want as long as you remove the release sheet. And use that as a template for your hand stitching. You'll thread a hand sewing needle with your favorite color of Salky Cotton Petite Thread. And that's probably going to be the hardest part is finding your favorite color because they are really, really pretty. And you can just relax and stitch away. The reason I like this little project is I'm not a hand sewer, but I can easily do that. And it takes about five minutes and you're done uh, sewing a row of hand embroidery. And uh, I have some friends who knit. Um, that is really popular. And that's another four letter word for me. I'm sorry, knit and hand. Yes. But I found that I can do handwork while gathering with my knitting friends and still feel like I'm part of the crowd. And not only that, they become interested in what I'm doing and want to learn more. Once you're finished, you just simply rinse away the sticky fabric solvy. Now, this is small enough that I would actually run this underneath the sink and feel quite comfortable in doing that. And then you'll want to finish off the block. You'll probably add a backing to the block. You might want to um, add binding around it. One of my favorite techniques is to, uh, after I add a backing fabric, I like to use the uh, different uh rotary blades that have the decorative cuts to finish off uh, some of my projects like this. So wow, that is pretty amazing. But if you visit our Salky Embroidery Club at SalkyEMBClub.com, we have a, these uh, a, a mouth and brain get coordinated. We have this document available as a download, the Crazy Quilt Hand Stitches that you can print out on the Sticky Fabric Solvi. So, uh, so you can have easy access uh, to a free download of Crazy Quilt Hand Stitches just by visiting the Salky Embroidery Club. And this is just a screenshot of the um, Salky Embroidery Club. And as you can see, uh, where that circled area, that's the general area that you'll find the um, bar for free designs. And there's other designs on there, too. There's even um, a hand, um, some red work that you can print out on the sticky fabric solvi and uh, place it on a dish towel or something like that. There, there's a lot of... Um, designs there, including embroidery designs. So I wanted to give you a couple close-ups of this stunning handwork and just how beautiful it really is. Nancy, I can't thank you enough for sharing this wonderful technique with us. It sure has revolutionized the way I feel about hand embroidery. And when I did my first couple stitches, I was amazed when I rinsed the stabilizer away at the finished results. It's just absolutely stunning. And you can go above and beyond and add some beautiful beads and other embellishments to your work. And what I like about this is it takes a block, you know, it could even be a simple pieced block, but it adds another layer of dimension, some texture, some more interest to your work. And I really hope you give this a try because it's a great technique. And just another close up of this. I really, really love it. And you can see Nancy uh, used either two strands or one strand of the embroid of the um, 12 weight thread, the cotton petites in some of these. And that's allowed too. So the project that uh, is featured in the book 
is uh, shown here. I just showed you the foundation part of it. This evening, I showed you how to piece together your crazy wavy patchwork. We went over the beautiful hand embroidery, but also featured in this project is sheer 3D applique. There is a really cool technique uh, using a uh, Solvi stabilizer and metallic threads to create that interesting spider web. And then Nancy, oh, she's just phenomenal. She created a 3D spider using puffy foam. And that sure is an inspiration once you learn how to do that to create other insects. And, you know, kids love to do this kind of stuff too. I know, um, you know, we're always looking for something to keep our children uh, busy and active during the summer months when they're away from school. And um, the 3D uh, applique, you can see that there's a butterfly and um, some flowers and leaves. And this was really a lot of fun. There's a lot of techniques packed into this one project. So I'm just going to recap what we discussed tonight. We talked about piecing curves and how we made that easy with using a lightweight thread, such as Salky's uh, polylight thread that is a 60 weight. We started scratching the surface of demystifying thread weights and revealing some of our secrets about stabilizer success. And then I showed you how you can use uh, Sticky Fabrisolvi and the Cotton Petite threads to do beautiful handwork that just is perfect every time, even if you're not an experienced um, person who does handwork. So, Patty, we have another question and answer session, so bring them on. Holy cow, I, I just apologized. We're not keeping up. <laughs> <laughs> Curious. But what, but what, I'm available all the time. Ellen's here. We'll get to you eventually. Just send me an email at patty, P-A-T-T-I, dot Lee, L-E-E, -E, at sulky.com, and we'll get it figured out for you, I promise. Uh, I, just, I, <laughs> I can type pretty fast, but I wasn't keeping up. So, some of the questions. Um, there were questions about the water solubles, about dissolving it and, and that sort of thing. And we've covered a lot of that. I, I was kind of tuning Michelle out as we were going along. I'm sorry, Michelle. That's not anything personal. <laughs> that's uh, okay. <laughs> a lot of people want to know if they can view the webinar again and how. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, in a couple days, you're going to receive an email um, and we have your information when you've registered. And in that email, you will have a link to the recording of this webinar that will be available um, through our GoToWebinar account. In addition, a printout version of this present of uh, a PDF version of this presentation will be available for you to download. And I'll also include that link in the email that you'll receive in a couple days. Uh, sometime next week, this recording and the PDF file will be uploaded to the Salky website and you will be able to go to it and access it from there. So once we put it up there, it is going to be um, accessible to you forever. So very good question. As I'm looking at the questions, I'm thinking we've got, you know, 20 or 30 more seminars out of the questions alone. <laughs> but they're really good. great questions. Uh, someone wants to know when your next uh, webinar is going to be, Michelle. Awesome. The next webinar is going to be on June 9th. And so you can start marking your calendars for the second Tuesday of the month at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And um, wow, I've been so busy putting this one together and rehearsing for it, but it will cover our polyester and our rayon threads and will probably cover some embroidery as well. It's still a new topic, um, not a new topic, but I'm still planning for that, but that's what I've decided to do. I got the okay from uh, Jason to proceed with that. So I'm really excited for that one too. And there were a couple people that wanted to know if the artistry and applique classes were for um, 
being certified to teach and they are not they're just for fun they're for everybody and anybody and you just come and have a good time and the certified classes are just the two that we talked about earlier but you just drop me a note if you're confused and and I'll help you along and you can go to craft you to to learn more about that so Wonderful. Well, let me check the time and see where we're at. We're at 10.05, so we are going to do a door prize, and I hope that's my next slide. Okay, it's not my next slide, but we're going to go ahead and do a door prize since it's past 10 o'clock. So if you can select a random name from our attendees, please, I would greatly appreciate that and see who our lucky winner is. I'm so glad you all hung in there with us um, until the end. We are almost finished, but this has been so much fun. I'm so glad that we are offering webinars now. I'm so wired. I'm not going to sleep tonight. I don't know about the rest of you. <laughs> I might need a little assistance. <laughs> and I have a winner on the door prize and I couldn't pick somebody with a five letter name. No. Um, it's Rosemarie Andriozzi, and I apologize if that's not quite right. It's Rosemarie Andriozzi. Wow, congratulations, Rosemarie. If you can type into your questions box and say, I am the lucky winner, I can't believe it's me, that would be great. Um, we will have your email address in our printout, um, but you can also give us your email address so that we can uh get in touch with you and get your address where to send your door prize package. Well, congratulations, Anne-Marie. So uh, just as a reminder, the coupon code uh, to receive the 25% off the products that I showed you tonight is SUL. W E B one. And, um, sometime next week, the, a recording of this webinar will be available at our website, Saki.com. Have a little bit more information for you. Kelly Nagel, our social media manager does our, as, is our presence online. She has a wonderful blog uh, that she posts to frequently as well as keeping us informed by Facebook. So we would def greatly appreciate it if you like us on Facebook, tell your friends about us, and read our blog. We also went over the Salky Embroidery Club tonight. Anytime you have a question, even after we end this, the webinar and you have a question for us, you can always send them to asksalky at salky. Dot com. Don't forget we talked about artistry and applique as well as seasons with Salky, two new programs. Just to let you know where we're going to be this month, uh, Eric and I will be in different places around the, the U.S. And here's where we are. If you want to get more information uh, about these seminars that we're doing, you can visit our website and uh uh, get contact information for the guild coordinators. We already did our door prize. Did Anne Marie respond to us? Oh, Patty put herself on mute. So hopefully we heard from her, but if not, we will be able to find her. This is the final. Did she? Michelle. Oh, great. Great. This she she wants to know what the prize was. Oh, well, let me back up one screen. The prize is the same. It's this nice uh, package that we have put together the secrets to Salky secrets to successful applique, the book, um, the Salky book, a package of puffy foam, as well as three different stabilizers, the Fabrisolvi, Tender Touch, and Fuse and Stitch. And again, we will cover these stabilizers at another time. I don't have another hour to go over these with you, but I wish I could. <laughs> and um, also two spools of cotton blendable threads. They're random colors uh, in the 30 weight and 12 weight. So this is our final slide. This is where I leave you and say good night or good day. Um, some people are in Europe and it's already tomorrow there. So thank you all very much for joining us. We had a wonderful time tonight. I really enjoyed putting this together. I hope that what we showed you this evening provides you with some inspiration and makes you feel comfortable about using different types of thread weights and different types of stabilizers. So stay tuned uh, for our next webinar. That information will be coming out uh, two weeks prior to it. Um, and that 
the webinar is scheduled for June 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern time. So I can't thank you enough for joining us. I could ramble on all night, but um, I know you all have busy schedules and other things to do. So be sure uh, to check your email so that you can have access to the recording and the PDF version of this presentation. So thank you very much and um, good night, good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.